how do you have to feel that yeah. people are so bereft yeah. of like the ability to analyze their own lives and, and recognize their own situations is like frankly insulting. <clears throat> Large, sexually frustrated young male population. I was, yeah, I was just going to say, and that's pretty high up there on the roster. Um, that's not, you know, I don't think he knows anything about Russia. Because, you know, if there's one thing that they, I don't think that there's that big of a problem there with that. Although, you know, they, Russia is the... Russia is the infamous place which has a long-standing history of getting their butt kicked and then somehow, you know. Declining average height is a That's, that, that's what I was just mother. gonna say, yeah, declining average height. I mean, actually, if anything, it's increased over the last... And, well, you know, it's just... Like the biggest example that always comes to mind is Napoleon, right? When of course. Russia just burned Moscow in order to not let him stay in. Just keep in yeah. mind. Just keep in mind for all that want to be sort Most of snarky. People starving, that's also inaccurate. Um, Wait, I have to watch this. <laughs> I, so I have a nice. I think snarky... that's what it's talking the about. Kukovsky like are um, taking away the Slavic monopoly on violence. The uh... listen. For everybody that wants to use this, I have a very snarky thing for Russian shows to you, like against Russian shows to use. Because the Commonwealth did sack Moscow historically. And I'm 16... pretty sure. Which day was it? Was yeah? that 16? 16... 16 something. My God. Yeah, it's 16. Military's loyalties, etc. Right? Uh, You're going through. I, have, I would have to look at that book. But. Okay. It's basically uh, the Commonwealth sacked Moscow, and I'm pretty sure the Cossacks were present. So in a in a way, Ukraine Strange sacked second. Moscow. Yeah, I think the the issue with the breakdown right, and fixed. monopoly on violence is it's just that it's not a very good term. So a lot of times it's shifted towards very monopoly good. on legitimate violence. Okay. So it's more about a uh, how people perceive a certain act of violence as being legitimate. Uh, if there's a if there's a proper monopoly on violence by the state, it doesn't mean that violent crime doesn't exist. It means that basically all violent crime will be perceived by the population as being illegitimate. Whereas if there isn't one, then somebody may say perceive a. Uh, perceive a revenge killing as being a form of legitimate violence. Yeah, that's possible. We'll have to see what he means, because again, we're only 20 seconds in, and this is already, already yeah. off the rails. Oh, come on, just work. Through all of these metrics, and for reasons I'll explain through this video, Russia is one of the countries, and the biggest major country in the world alongside China, which scores highest on if it'll have a revolution in the next five years. This you is a video a to term talk for about that. the collapse of modern Russia. This is a video I've been wanting to I'm make for a, a long time, time at least for the last year since the start of the war in Ukraine. What However, the... I've been too busy and or lazy <laughs> so to actually a, get along. A, um... Like a bird? An animal? Like a plane. Pressure. Why? No, it's you like, man. couldn't find anything better? At I'm least he didn't make the map hey, himself. No. <laughs> oh, by the way, speaking of Russia, I know I'm rambling a bit without sense now, but I've watched a very, I'm actually translating it, a very interesting panel 
by historians, and one of them was, is, is I guess, is still alive, a professor from Kiev. And interestingly enough, he used the phrasing of when Ruthenia was a part of the Commonwealth, which is Rush, mm -hmm. it saw itself because there was the Kiev Rush, right? Mm -hmm. It saw Russia and Ruthenia as two completely different separate Ruthenias, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. so that's Which a uh, historian was this? Do you remember? Do you know his name? Mm, I'm going to look him up now. <laughs> from my own stream and second because his I'm gonna go to the Hazza channel to the newest stream we've been having all kinds of audio problems tonight yeah I was just gonna say I'm, oh, I'm we having a hard time hearing so... what if altist uh, that's on you okay I'm gonna give you the name right okay okay Viktor Brekunenko. Brekunenko? Yes. Like Brekun? Brekunenko. Brekunenko? That's like a liar's son. Viktor <laughs> Brekunenko. Brek. Yeah. All right. Let's get, let's get, let's try to get past the introduction and the ad. <sighs> the ad. Into doing it. Now I've actually done the research. And I'm excited to see what you folks think. Research. Oh, God. I guess there's no ad. There'll be an ad. As a content creator, I constantly have to worry about getting hacked or having... ...of data. I can't hear anything. I can only hear you guys, but I, can, I can't hear him. Out of brokers. Maybe if you prefer to have Opteries robots do deletion record. Check your you volume. Should. Check your volume on Stream Discord. Volume. The volume Stream be, volume. It's high. Like, no, no, no. Cl right click on the stream thing and check stream volume. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Oh. Oh, oh, here we go. Okay, I got it. I had a good oh, amount of money that modern Russia will not survive the next. Can you hear me now? Yeah, everything. Which started yeah. three. You were you were month. not the problem. You can also get an extra twenty percent off any plan by using the promo code Rudyard. That him? Protect your online privacy. Yeah, that's and him. Sign up Does for he make his own shirt today? We made our own merch. shirt. It's merch. He might have merch. I'd bet a good amount of money that modern Russia will not survive the next five years. As I always like to say through these videos, my job is betting against That's God, stupid. and there are an infinite amount of ways no, to be wrong, no and only a handful to be right. You've got to stop betting against God. Um, he's going to win, and he hates you personally, apparently. That's Thus, really, I that's don't really have complete thing. knowledge of true. Russia's that's future, true. but I... I Bye. don't have complete knowledge of the future. I'm glad you acknowledge that. That's an understatement, dear. Nope, you should have laid down, puppy. I am confident the fall of Russia is soon. Through this video, we will investigate the factors leading to this and hear how the modern Russian social order was established as a reaction to the fall of the Soviet Union. Through that, we can see why this social order doesn't have the legs to stand on for much longer. Today's Russia exists in the shadow of the fall of the Soviet Union, and so to understand... What? Poland is a... Oh, oh no, that's, that's Soviet Union. Let me, let me look at this. Angola. Why does the key um, say allies in question marks? No. Why does it say the Russian Empire in 1987? Yeah, I was just going to say that's really dumb. <sighs> Why? The Russian Empire was something very different from the... Imperial Russia is different from the Soviet Union. Um, but God. I was, I'm pretty sure... God. No, that's... Cuba when... was a client state? 
Well, yeah. Well, I mean... I mean, the Russian Empire did have also Poland and areas. At least part of Poland. Mongolia, certainly. The Warsaw Pact states, certainly. Cuba, Afghanistan maybe. should be occupied at this point, and it's not. Yeah. Um... Cambodia, certainly not. Laos? Laos, I don't know enough. Not, not really. To... Laos is nominally an ally of, uh, nominally an ally of the United States. I mean, it was, but at this time, it was it was already the the communist government had taken over. Actually, it took yeah. over in, I want to say, wait, why is sixty five pink? That's a good Lucy, question. You might know that better, better than me. When when did um, because you know a lot about Indochina. Um, when did oh, well, not that much. Laos I know a bit about become, Vietnam. What? I know a bit about Vietnam, but not about Laos. But not the rest of it. Okay. Yeah, mostly yeah. above Vietnam. I, I, I only know enough to say that Cambodia certainly is not a ally. I just yeah. wonder why, why Vietnam is pink. This is uh, very concerning after, map making. Uh, I, I think you just labeled. After China invaded Vietnam in uh, in 1979, uh, Vietnam. Why is North Korea being... a client state? Sorry, can you can you repeat after? Can you repeat? Um, after China invaded Vietnam in 1979, uh, they, uh, Vietnam really stopped liking China. Uh, but this is about and, the USSR, not about China. Uh, and the USSR yeah. and China hated each other. So, so I think that they are placing them as a USSR ally, even but though But it has a question really... mark. Ally? Yeah. <laughs> so that's why I'm confused. <laughs> Uh, he sounds about as sure. I'm guessing he's just not confident. Soviet foreign policy as the Soviets were. Mm -hmm. Dang, so, how modern day, Russia actually, works. Vietnam it's important days. to see the conditions that Russia had right after the fall of the USSR, which reflect the current political and social structure better than the actual conditions today. When the Soviet Union. This fits into what? one of the biggest philosophic themes that I've tried to push through my videos. Societies are living, breathing organisms. What? No, they're not. He's missing a comma. <laughs> Between breathing and organisms? Yeah, yeah, breathing in, in no, 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 breathing organisms and a comma and then modernity. Oh. At least in the U.S. system. <laughs> no, it's just a run-on sentence. Is, is he just... To, trying to get at the concept of path dependence, but uh, using weird vitalist language for it. He might be. Give me a second. I got Modernity out. treats them like computers or machines. What I hate about Waldorf Altist is these. Why this is this Western society is going to collapse? Why Russia is going to collapse? How come this is a theme of all your videos? What if Altist? Seriously. Do you know what I hate about What If Alt has videos? What? It's that they usually really drag and that he doesn't say anything and it just becomes a chore to watch them. He talks without saying anything. Yes. So the videos become a chore. He says absolutely nothing. So that, I guess that's my biggest gripe. They're a bit of a chore to go through. If you want your like, kid to know... I think you can... If you talk about this with economies... Uh, a, uh, it is the case that if you say put in place a gigantic subsidy that makes a bunch of companies come into existence and then take it away, then the, the companies will still exist and might be able to adapt. And likewise, if you say ban cars for 10 years, all the car companies will go out of business. And if you, re if you reverse the ban, then the car companies still won't exist. This is path dependency. It doesn't mean that something is alive, but I kind of think that this is the 
best interpretation of what he's actually saying right here. But yeah, but like, I guess, but even then, like, like, like read the sentence. If you want your kid to know how to bike, teach them and let them bike for a few years. Don't expect them to be perfect in two weeks. If you want your kid to learn how to ride a bike, uh, there's a verb that you need there. Bike, it cannot be both the noun and the verb in the sentence. Um, society is a, with a machine, you can cut gears out at your own free will to improve it. No, you can't. Imagine going and breaking open a watch and taking the gears out. What happens to the watch? It stops working. It becomes a gearless watch. Don't be a... Uh... More to the point, you can, in fact, take organs out of a person. I've had it done to me. Then you can still be alive. And you can put in new organs as well. Yes, you can add new ones. What is this? Speak... Oh, my God. Like... This, this is, again, an example of him saying nothing a lot of words. That's uh, perfect. Yeah, that's exactly he, this an example when... of him saying nothing. And let's let's continue. I, 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 I... In self-imploded, I the assumption among the communist point. elite who made that transition was that Russia, simply by adopting the right policies, could become a wealthy, capitalist, free society like those in Western Europe. However, that turned out to be completely untrue. As I've talked about in my video on Orthodox civilization that and the economy, happened, the success... Moron. More to the point, I don't think too many of those people were terribly interested in making Russia into a wealthy society. Nearly as much no, as they that's, were... No, that's exactly what I'm saying. That's not what these people were thinking. Oof. They were thinking about how much they could fucking benefit from it and steal. Even from a... Even if you take their motives much more uh, charitably they didn't think that they'd be able to do it overnight they thought it was it was part of a gigantic historical process uh, not just they suddenly because they suddenly achieved true communism immediately that's something that uh, actually i think lenin was the first person to advocate that idea really Sure, but Lenin just, was not to, was very dead by ninety one, very dead. I just mummified. like to point out delicately that changing a whole I think he system jumped, of governance. I think he and jumped economy. right to the Russian Revolution, so that's really. Oh, oh no! I'm thinking about yeah. something different. I'm thinking about the people. Oh, yeah. Understanding Orthodox but, civilization, but I just um, like because to... those areas in northern Siberia are not Orthodox. Orthodox yeah um, i just like to point out something all right changing a whole economic and governance system is a bit more than just adopting some new policy just just saying yes you know that by fact because you live in a country that went through that process yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit more than just oh we're gonna adopt some cool policy that's gonna just change no. everything <laughs> Uh, it, it isn't because that's how I, I do it in like, civilization um, six Lucy, I, I gotta pipe in with this when i have visited i didn't get this impression when i was in you know poland at least in krakow mm -hmm. but my impression the first few times when i went to russia and then when i went to ukraine uh was that capitalism you know, was gradually adopted and there were aspects of it that were very, very un unregulated and sloppy. It's almost like as if like a capitalism bomb sort of went off to some degree. Like just, just at least from an American perspective, just the way that, um, like, I, I don't know how to, how to, how to say it. Um, how like, in Ukraine, for example, you can have like, there's not a lot of like zoning requirements and you have like various, you know, like next to, next to, um, like a cafe, you could have a sex shop or something like this. Right. I mean, Keep in mind. In the United States like this too, like Texas is very much like this, but I, I just, I was kind of like very 
keep in mind that um, used to be a thing in Poland as well. But there's it's important to remember that Poland had to <clears throat> do a lot of changes just because of the sheer requirements that you need to meet to join the European if, Union for one. Yeah, if you look at the uh, at the history of privatization in Russia, it's very, very clear that they did not genuinely believe in doing this for the good of the people. Okay. But the, in the in the yeah. early nineties, a lot of the things in Poland were just basically wild west. That right now they need a lot of permits, a lot of procedure, and back then you do just you know Yeah, that's the, the same thing with Ukraine and I want to say that the situation has gotten better, and I would even say that in Russia, to it some degrees, it has. But in comparison with Poland, you still have a lot of organized crime and a lot of corruption where you can kind of. You had of... that in Poland as well, the organized crime. That was yeah. pretty. But I think a lot of these things will be changing as Ukraine will be working towards meeting the goals to. Uh, join the European Union, especially since the process has already, technically speaking, begun, of and a course. lot, a lot has already been done to curb the um, corruption thing. From what I know, ah uh, yes, organization, bureaucracy, it warms my German heart. Of certain economic and political policies is contingent upon the society's social structure and development. The thing is that in the Western world, there's a thousand plus year history of the development of various non-government institutions, such as a free market, church, Mobility civic associations, a democracy, or non-government institution. Monarchy and nobility Monarchy are both. Monarchy is a non-government institution. <laughs> and the church totally is a non-government institution. Nobility in many countries just formed the government. That's, yeah, that's basic history. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I don't really get... <laughs> Orthodox this... medieval social structure. Why is... Orthodox. Why is the... Why is there this chart like so... this and the other chart like and that? And to me, it's really... To me, it's really... Yeah. the merchants and the nobility were equals to the monarch? In no, I, I, yeah, Europe? I don't understand. Why is one tiered? And the other I don't one understand, is, is... I don't understand why nobility, I mean, from my perspective, why is nobility apart from the monarchy? That's what I was just going to say. Yeah, I, I, don't I mean, get in, it. The, in my favorite country, the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth, the monarch was elected from the nobility. Why is the, so, why is the Orthodox nobility katanas? <laughs> They could be I think those are ones. sabers. Uh, no, they're not sabers. Sabers would have a curved like handle. Yeah. The sabers have the curved handle guard. I think he he is right about the church being a little bit more independent in the west in the west versus He's the right. east. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but the church is not like like the 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 the, the western medieval social structure has no organization to it. It's just four things on a line. The West had no clear ruling social class. Well, that's not true. Democracy just sprouted up in the Middle Ages out of nothing instead of being rediscovered in the Enlightenment like it actually happened. Why why is what a fault is? How can you be so I don't know, what's the word? Like all these subscribers are hate subscribers, right? That's what's gotta be happening here. Yeah. That's so they cool. hate him and they're watching his videos to laugh like us. No, I believe all this of his means subscribers that if you surrender insults. power from the state, that society has evolved various techniques on how to manage it. Remember, human societies are living, breathing things that need training in the same way a human muscle does, or how you need to train on a certain skill. Wait, like wait, 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 hold. Can I hear that sentence again? I'm sorry. Can I hear that from the top? 
Oh, what? Well, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna get myself some that wine. society has evolved okay, various what? techniques Can on I... how to manage it. Remember, uh, human societies are living, breathing things that need training in the that? same way a human muscle does. What? Or how you need to train on a certain skill like riding a bike or being a responsible what? person for years. Oh my god, no, that's... I... That's... What does that even mean? A society needs training like a muscle? What does that mean? It strikes me as if you had to train a society, what would be very useful is some kind of secret police that reported to the government any kind of infraction that society might... Members of that society might have made so that they could be punished and therefore not do that thing again. Doesn't it strike I'm you as that might my... be useful? I'm getting a custom. Service. Yeah, it does. I I I don't know. I I, I feel what? like. I'm also, changing my Discord the... status to society trained like a muscle. <laughs> communist part so the social structure of irl communism dictator secret police the you secret know, police kills the communist that. party and the farmers and the merchants and the military officers and the church and the working class is turned into slaves um okay that's a unique interpretation of that also the pink color offends me it's just i'm sorry it's it's stupid. What's presented here is stupid, no matter how you look at no, it. No, it's extremely stupid, but what's equally stupid is he forgot to put the X over the secret police because there's periodically purges of it. That's true. I mean, what was this? Yezhov was pretty purged, Yezhov's wasn't he? Yezhov's purge was a, a big one. Um, I mean, he got yeeted off the photos. My favorite is Lev Barrios <laughs> being Yezhov killed Yezhov after Stalin dies. Part of a major purge of the... Um, Ukrainian SSSR uh, and KVD. Um, there's a really good book about it, actually, by Lynn Viola. Stalinist perpetrators on, on trial. Basically, the the purge of the party elite in Ukraine. Right. In what, in what years? In 36, 37, I want to say, or 37, 38. Because I know um, there was a purge that already started in, like, the... Yeah. As far as the 20s. Yeah, yeah. And apparently a big conspiracy theory was that Ukraine elite was planning to separate from the USSR with the help of the Polish government. Yeah, oh, that's happen. interesting. Um, that was a big conspiracy that was weaponized was to... Union for the... Hetman, get your headphones back on. What? Yeah, yeah. Hetman, get your headphones back on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, now we can hear you. Okay. Yeah, that was the, um, the liberate, like, it was the, um, Union to Liberate Ukraine, like, constructed organization, yeah. I believe. And that also brings us back to the Great Hunger, when Stalin yeah. visited his home country of Georgia, and he found out that food was being confiscated, and he said, and he scolded. it. The officers and said, "No, you're not about. You're not allowed to do this here in Ukraine. It's fine here. No, it will just destabilize the place." And I mean, like, is that a documented incident? Because it is. Yeah, it is. That's interesting. Actually, you have to send. I read it in a very interesting book called "The Final Solutions: Genociders and Their Methods" by a Polish Jewish journalist that specializes in genocide, basically the topic of genocide. Send me the, his name and send me like um, a link to that book, even if I I can maybe get it shipped um, from Poland. He's um, called Konstanty Debek. All right, I'm gonna click the button and we're gonna see what the structure okay, of IRL ahead. communism is. Okay, I'm gonna send it to you. Today. What occurred under Stalinism was that the centralized communist government butchered every other major social institution. 
Human societies take centuries or thousands of years to build their social institutions, and the Soviets torched the Russian aristocracy, military officers, church, family, merchant class, independent farmers, and every other social family. organism. Family? Citation Stalin... needed. There were family. no Soviet families. What? Also, they apparently torched their own party, which doesn't make a whole That's lot of so, sense. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, they did and, torch all the other communist party. That part's actually true. Well, they well, and they clearly have military officers in Soviet Union, so I don't know what he's talking about there either. They're talking about I mean, the, 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 the Soviet yeah. Union did purge the Bund, for example. Yeah, yeah, but that doesn't necessarily mean you purged the entire military. Like no, he didn't. Some people he definitely didn't purge the entire clergy either. Nor did he. Like you know, that's the thing is, um, you know, these or these organs in society, these like um, you know, structures. Of course, they were dramatically hit and traumatized. But um, genuinely, generally, what the Soviet strategy to do was is, um, you know, periodically rid the system of people perceived as enemies and replace them with yes men and allies and that's, yeah, that's... essentially what what happened yeah there what happens also is so another strategy there was also the strategy of propping up possible groups or possible mini states even within yeah. the USSR and then when the sh the wind shifted they would be arrested or killed like something like that was tried with Poland of when course. the USSR tried to create mini Poland within the USSR to sort of take over bigger pre-World War II Poland using it. And mm -hmm. then it turned out that it would not work. So the special Polish operation of NKVD was implemented and about like, at least over 100,000 people. That also, a similar thing happened before the, you know, during the uh, Great Hunger, during the whole of the war. Um, yeah. Actually, they had a like a client organ in Eastern Poland, Western Ukraine, which was the uh, Western Ukrainian Communist Party. And that party, I believe it was under Pilsudski, actually they defected like from the, so like they, they um, cut ties with the Soviet elite. And that drove a lot of the violence, a lot of the purges that you see. Nope. Um, I mean, it wasn't the only factor, but it was a major factor yeah. in um, the violence in the early 1930s, early to mid 1930s. People sort of forgot that Piłsudski was a. So, so what happens is you get accused of a Trotsky Plotsky and get executed, but that not everyone gets executed. Well, uh, with the Polish and uh, Kavuda operation, it was really wild because people were just searched in phone books for Polish names and arrested as spies. <laughs> yeah, a lot of the Ukrainian there were a lot people, of people or, like as well. You know, Ukrainians or people with Polish surnames yeah, you know, exactly. or ancestry in Vinitsko Oblast, they're not gonna be I mean a lot of them didn't speak Polish. They weren't yeah, and like, culturally people from Polish. Siberia that were sent them during the partitions of the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth were uh, accused of being spies for the Polish nation state. So, yeah, that's... Uh, and then without killing yeah. other members of the Communist Party, that means that the only social group left in the Soviet Union were the secret police who were used to ruthlessly destroy the rest of the culture. Writing episodes like went the, through this hell, is kind too. of strange they, they since I'm shut <laughs> Having multiple layers of complexity together and just vastly different timescales. With, what... with all these purges, I'm surprised any citizens were left, according to what if all has. Yeah. Families were purged, I would remind you. The concept of family just gone, obliterated. Nuclear family, nuclear missile. Nuclear. What we're going to see play out in Russia soon is a combination of minute short-term decisions that will change the course of history alongside trends that have been taking centuries to build up and release nope. now. That's yeah. how the real world is, though. However, one of What if Altists trying to lecture people mean? about how the real world is, is, is what does that mean? truly rich. The often forgotten the often second forgotten second world. Uh, is that Venezuela? 
Yes, yeah, it's Venezuela. But why is he putting Venezuela there like then? Why is what, what Poland outside of the you, second world? What the hell does that mean? Wait, because what, he what? thinks that Venezuela was always socialist. No, wait, hold on. Why is Poland outside of the second world? Yeah, why is um basically the entire Warsaw... Here. I think he's trying to, to it... portray his present day. And oh look, he didn't put Greece in the second world, but he's got all. But that makes there. no sense. Croatia. Second world is a very specific term. It's also not used it's... anymore. Like it's fallen yes, out of use. But it's yeah. also a very specific term. That's the you know Eastern Bloc. Even country. third world isn't really used anymore. You have the term global south, right? I mean, third nation. world yeah. is used differently than it should be. Because the yeah. third world were the neutral countries, technically speaking, that were not on the side of the West or the... Yeah, it's a very IR, compact, complex R, IR and concept now people, of the when, when people just say the third world, they mean poor. Yes. And it just used to mean ne neutral to the there, conflict there's, of... The... There's a, uh, a, a, certain, a certain level to it that's, you know, teensy bit racist. So why does yeah. he consider... I don't get why he considered Southeastern Europe to uh, be in the Second World, but doesn't consider Northeastern Europe to be to be in the Second World. I, yeah, I he, don't he know. He left out the, the Baltics for sure. Um, yeah, why are the Baltics? What is wrong with you? I think he's maybe referring to present day here. But, but there is no Second World in the present there's day. There's no Second or Third World in the present day. Yeah, I don't know what he. Well, by we could very well say that there's no first world while we're at it, but <laughs> because first world were the countries opposed to the second. We have abolished worlds. My next job will be abolishing class. One of the things that in researching this video I found is that Russia, alongside other former communist societies like China are the least culturally dense places on the planet. What that means what is the that they've completely stripped away. Least culturally. I don't even know what he means. They have... Uh... Can you measure cultural density? Ah, yes, the culture is very dense in here today. Yes, uh, exactly. You can totally measure the density of the thing that surrounds us at all times in all aspects Bhutan of our lives. One of the most definitely, culturally dense places on the planet because it's. I, yeah, I don't care. What the culture, all culture, and it's not an exaggeration. Culture is just everything that surrounds us at all times. There, are, yeah, this, culture there, can be dense. I got it, guys. Dense. I know what this is. He can measure culture the cultural metachlorians, so he knows. How strongly connected you are to the culture. The culture is not dependent on population <laughs> do, numbers or do. something like that. And what if all this is the chosen one to bring balance to our culture? Jeez, geez, like, no, does no, he no, think any that traditions you're 100 sense of culture? Correct in, 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 in the fact that culture is like an omnipresent thing. And yeah. it's, yeah. it's always evolving, it's, it's constantly. You know, yeah, yeah why he's say, saying that. with other places, etc. He's right? saying yeah, that in. Plus. Is he saying that in Russia, traditional religion, politeness, values, and clothing don't exist? Yes, I, I've actually been to Russia, like and is everyone is naked. It's clothing and value. It's, it's everything is culture. It's not an exaggeration. Yeah, I, I don't get the sense. I, I, I tell you this as a failed culture student dropout. <laughs> this is, I, I, let's see unity that allowed those societies to prosper in healthy ways. I'm going to get into this point in much greater depth later, but a society oh God, that believes don't. in nothing is completely doomed on every level. The thing with all of these threads is that since the also, Soviets this whole followed plastic Russian society pause, so much pause, that please, pause, pause, like the plastic culture, that's not entirely true either. Like you had this trend, trend, this thing that was imposed called socialism. It was part in Poland as well, but people worked around it and still created their own things, still created beautiful art and beautiful stuff. 
So the plus the plastic part is not entirely as true as Waterfall has thinks. I don't even think he knows that much though. Just gonna like he's he's sub he's trying to advance that people don't believe in things in countries like Russia and China, and that oh, that's actually insane. Yeah, I don't. I don't think that he. I don't know how it is that you could actually postulate this. I think you can make the exact same claim that say, uh, due to due to commercialism, America just has a plastic culture because all these things are made by companies and people don't believe in things. And I don't think it really. It, he needs to have some kind of evidence for this. Called a consumer culture, or yeah, but even a consumer, consumer culture cult. is still a culture. Even if you believe it's myopic, it's still a culture. Yeah, I mean. And like people yeah. believe in and participate in that culture. Oh, uh, like like wow, like the yeah, like how do you have to feel that people are so bereft yeah. of like the ability to analyze their own lives and, and recognize their own situations is like frankly insulting. I think not believing in something would also be a culture. It is to a certain yeah. extent. It's just not fun. Uh, I, I, I believe in Taylor Swift, and I believe Taylor is right. Haters gonna hate, 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 hate. I'm sorry? With the fall of communism, what occurred after was complete social breakdown. I know it's a meme on this show where I constantly shit on communism for being the worst political what? ideology ever, but like for the average rush. I'm not entirely certain that was... The message you want you intended to send social break what yeah. social breakdown he knows russia functioned as a what society after after communism fell and continued to. but the warsaw pact states were quote unquote communist and communism fell there and i don't remember any social what what's that the term they use Social, social breakdown. Collapse. Social co I don't remember social collapse or breakdown. Wasn't there a period of Polish history very I, I, recently? I must have missed. Where you were all running through the streets screaming, right? ripping off your clothes and gnashing your teeth? That didn't happen? I'm trying to. I'm trying to remember. Maybe. Lucy wasn't that popular. She wasn't invited to the apocalypse party. Ah. Uh, damn. Okay, social breakdown. And like everyone in this photo looks like they're having a grand old time, except the guy who can't move his tank because yeah. everyone's standing on it. Except for the weirdly depressed soldier type person. Yeah, that's right. He's not feeling doing too well. I think he's ashamed of himself. Russia and after the fall of the Soviet Union was hell. The fall of the Soviet Union felt like an apocalypse for normal Russians. Russia went from one of the great world powers to a failed state in a handful of years. It also occurred very abruptly, where only the smartest or luckiest analysts were That's predicting the reductive. Soviet Union's fall in yeah, 19... That's incredibly reductive. Let's keep going. Let's try to get out of this. Let alone the average Russian citizen who is listening to state propaganda. Russia was a society where most people lived as serfs and clans for centuries, and with the Soviet Union, the state provided the stability that they lost with the end of serfdom. However, with the breakdown of the state, it felt like complete social collapse. It's difficult for us to fathom how horrifying this was in the West, especially since it occurred... Stop it, Avery. You need to the lay West, down. Look at like, how happy people the 90s, yeah! And then Russia, food line, and then Congo, like... Misery, hell. Why is the Congo isn't, even here? Yeah, isn't Nelson Mandela yeah, of course, in that's, the that's photo for the West? Too, is why? Why is the Congo here? Yeah. Uh, Nelson Mandela's in the photo for the West. Uh, is uh, any uh, other clearly non-Western person there? Uh, Super Nintendo, you gave a shout out to that. No, he just found that on in the nineteen nineties. We loved it. Or which seemed like a really recent and normy time period to us today. One of the shared th 
Why Russia is medieval. Why Russia is medieval. Hold on, I'll be right back. I just gotta check. One more. De facto. What's a Latam? Latin America, maybe? Yeah, I think that, that that's probably what it is. Uh... That's the name of an airline. Yeah, LATAM, Latin American Airlines. Why is this here? I don't think any of those things are medieval. Uh... All right, let's see this. <sighs> Why America is medieval. Oh. At least Poland's not it's medieval, built off I guess. Of those of medieval Europe, like the Holy War. What the fuck is he trying to say? I don't even know what the hell he's talking. America doesn't have a single ruling class I... like medieval countries. Why Latam I... is medieval? Latam. Latin America, we've determined. Yeah, Latin Listen, America. Yeah. Listen, Poland is not medieval, I guess, so... Poland isn't Poland even on the list. Like, Poland Russia apparently Adam. doesn't exist. Yeah, exactly, because it's not medieval. That's why it's not on the list. This is, this is a list of medieval countries, and Poland's not in it. Also, so, saying that Chinese is Malays are more... Ch Chinese Malays are more Chinese than China. Uh, what is he saying? I this don't is... think he's saying anything. I think he's... I've never it, been on. I've never been on drugs. That are this good. America maintained its right to government through divine right rather than nation state. Than the nation. What? 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 Oh, excuse me. <laughs> excuse uh, me. It's through worship divine... of the constitution. Or oh my god, that person is just an idiot, isn't he? What does that even That's mean? So funny. What? I, I so is know. every single. Is every single country based on the divine right? Based on no, just by America. The divine... Just America, apparently. Like you worship the Constitution and freedom like a god. Yeah, that's true. I did worship the Constitution just today. And you don't have a single ruling class like medieval countries. I, I, this is okay. Let's keep going themes that we're going to see across this video is that modern Russia acts in many ways like a medieval country. It's ironic I've said the exact same thing at the modern U.S., but no, it's for doesn't, the opposite by reasons. The way. Putin's rise to power is the sort of thing you'd hear about in medieval China or Germany. The really funny thing about Stalinism what? is that by the time it was done, the only functioning what? social institution were the secret police since medieval someone had Germany to carry out Stalin's places? orders. What? Does... Now he's going back to Stalinism again, from medieval Excuse Germany me? to Stalinism. That's a huge fucking leap. Yeah. That's not even a leap. Yeah. Medieval Germany. That, that's that's that not a, a leap. It's it's literally yeah, teleportation. Off, it's literally riding your bike off a cliff. Which you have to practice to do, apparently. Uh, yeah. In the same way where the warrior slave... I, I'm not entirely certain that his entire view of history doesn't come from an EU4 game he just left running over the weekend. <sighs> Mamelukes it's often became medieval. the rulers themselves Listen, in the medieval, it's medieval so it Middle says East. To be a As, how does a Mamelukes factor the into medieval Russia? How does a what factor into Russia? How does the Mamelukes factor into Russia? They're a warrior well, cast in the Ottoman Empire. Look like they're having, these people are like having fun. They I don't... guess there's they're warriors, so uh, and Russia has warriors, so so they're related. And I guess America has warriors too, so uh, the Mamelukes founded America. Thank you, Titan. Yes, Titan remember, uh, reminds chat to lick and describe. Also, like and subscribe oh, yeah. as well. I'm gonna like. 
communism fell apart, the secret police put themselves into power. Also, in the Soviet Union, there were two power cliques that dominated national politics, the Leningrad and Ukrainian factions. As Ukraine... I'm waiting for Hetman to go. Oh, okay. What? Sorry, sorry. sorry. Um, a friend of mine was just, she was just telling me that there was a shooting right by her apartment. Oh so, my sorry, I God. I distracted by that. Yeah, um, I... I bet. I'm going to replay that sentence yeah. for you. Politics, yeah, the please. Leningrad and Ukrainian factions. As Ukraine gained independence, what, what is it any surprise about? that a secret policeman am... from Leningrad got power? Putin got into power through a combination of his own Ukraine talents and luck. Faction? It's a complicated story. Yes, Ukraine was incredibly dominant over Russian politics. Of course. No! You did, of course, didn't you know? That's why Russia is defending itself now against the Ukrainian invasion yeah, it, it, to it's take all over the country. The Ukraine faction. I mean, Putin still has a grudge because they were his big competitors, apparently. No, it's just Putin is just defending himself against the Ukrainian aggression to they take over the that's, country. That's the real reason. It's the Ukrainian faction for influence. Ukraine on just wants to take over Russia. Yep, that's it. Know? Ukrainian, Ukraine. Leningrad life. <laughs> Leningrad. I have no clue how he's fucking Leningrad after the fall of the Soviet Union. Oh my goodness. Jesus like, H. Christ. Now I understand why why the most potent political statement Dude. made in Slavic politics recently was Zelensky playing the piano with his penis on TV. Two pretenders to the Russian throne, Putin and Ukraine. Is he trying to somehow invoke the Kievan Rus with this? Because that's the only... No, that's... No, I you're being too generous. So. You're being incredibly generous. Okay. Here. Yeah. I actually like, don't think so. Uh, he's, he, he, there's no way he Actually, can... I find it very interesting that in the English language you have both Kiev Rus as a term and Ruthenia separately as a term. Yeah, he that would be so generous as to because his understanding in, of in Russian Poland, history. In Poland it's just Rus. It's just a, a single term. Hetman, did you catch that what I said? In in Polish it's it's just uh, referred to as Rus, right? Rus, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Though, I, and in English you have Ruthenia and Kiev Rus separately, which is a Of bit course, yeah. Interesting to me. Lithuania is where all the I good food comes from. The Rus for the grand, Sorry? The, um, the Grand Duchy of Lithuania. I think they use the term in English, Ruthenia. They use that term. Yeah, but in, but the grand... in, I don't think... in, in, in Lithuania and in Poland, it was Rus. Just Rus. Yeah. Wait, are, Lithuania... Rus different... are these Lithuania and Ruthenia is the same, the same word? Lithuania? No. no. Um, no. it's, it, that's a different one, but, oh. um, and as I've managed to say today, like that there's a lot of misconceptions, like nowadays, when we think of language dominance, we think that the, the, we, we think in terms of nation states. So if a language dominates, it means that the nation quote unquote dominates, but in the grand Duchy of Lithuania, the primary language was for the longest time, Ruthenian which from the modern lens would suggest that Ruthenia has colonized the great duchy of Lithuania, which was not exactly of how course, that worked. Yeah. As far as I know, um, too, even the term like Litva or Lit is actually Litvania. somewhat loaded because um, a lot of like people, I, even like, as I know in Pantadiush, um, he lists Pantadeo, the land yeah. of where he's from as uh, Litva, right? Yes, the book starts with the words um, Lithuania, my homeland, you are as health itself. Yeah. That's because those areas, that's another thing that's missed. It's, within, mostly, in the, the, it's mostly a geographic term. Now yeah, it's, but that was the same. The the, that was, the that was the case across the board. Lithuania yeah. was a geographical area, but so was Poland. That was Ukraine and Ukraine, for that matter. Like that yeah. was all; they were all geographical areas that belonged to the Kingdom of Poland and the Great Duchy of Lithuania. But it's 
like there's a big mistake and a big trap in trying to look at these countries through the lens of the modern nation state. If that that makes... is a problem in at least 20th century, 19th century historiography. When you have the emergence of that, people start to interpret it in that way. And it's yes. done a lot of damage, I would say, to the field. There are still Ukrainian historians who really look at um, the history of Ukraine through an ethnocentric lens. And that's just yes, and it's not a good way of understanding like it's, Ukrainian history or history that, that, in general. That professor from Kiev said, and the other from doctor from Poland said it in a really good way that the lands of Ukraine were sparsely populated for a long time to begin with. So many people from different Ruthenians, different Rus came, and also Polish peasants came. And there was no enforcement to adopt any sort of thing, but the Polish peasants still sort of assimilated to the Ruthenian people that lived there. So it was this mixed sort of big we, thing uh, that, you know, it's... Can uh, we continue through this video? I want to see what his uh, arguments are. Yeah, let's try to keep this on to Russia and not turn this into a, a other every other state Ukrainian around debate. Russia. Yes. <laughs> yeah. The book All of the Kremlin's Men by Mikhail Zigar talks about where he was a combination of very capable, it's but also Mikhail, not assuming Mikhail. or threatening enough for other people in the structure to whack him down. I'm just checking to see if he spelled this correctly. No, it's pretty fucking uh, clear that he was a dictator pretty early on, just saying. Down. Who? He moved from being the leader of the secret police uh, to replacing like, the failed civilian government under Yeltsin yeah, peacefully and consensually. Okay, pause. Uh, peacefully he so and consensually. Yeah, it, it, I mean, he started. He, he started as prime minister by just basically getting thrown into the position without any kind of vote or anything like that, and then he, and then he carpet bombed Grozny to point of it no longer existing, and then afterwards then allegedly he did a false flag bombing in order to gain emergency power once he became president like yeah he was he, a dictator he didn't come in stuff. peacefully he got, the, he got the chronology a little bit mixed up he took power um did the false flag attack um allegedly which i i think more than likely was was a real false flag attack um and then he carpet bombed grozny he used that as a cause of belly or whatever too. Yeah, and and, and don't for, and over, don't forget about the uh, about the Beslan school siege where there was a hostage situation in a in a school and oh, I, I believe he the Beslan siege so well. I yeah. remember it when it happened. Yeah, I, I was and alive just, for that. You you were that, and you probably remember me talking about it and yes. grieving about it at that time. It was it was very shocking. I mean, it was horrible, but um, I can actually make an argument. Although actually, the Second Chechen War was extremely brutal. It actually took on an even more racist dimension than the first one. But the Chechen public had de-evolved into basically warlords controlling it and it was a hotbed for islamic terrorism it wasn't it doesn't justify russian crimes there but i think that any sort of like like the in intervention and the problem it, it being a problem was very much very real um but that's a whole different topic yeah let's let's we're only eight minutes in let's try to make it forward you might have to... Much like a medieval king, he was partially placed in the power since he wasn't seen as a threat to entrenched interests. But once he did get into power, he... That's not how medieval kings work. ...proved his durability and independence. Putin's Russia gains most of its popularity from what happened after this. Putin generally pulled Russia together from collapse. He was able to put down the long-standing revolt in Chechnya by establishing a feudal relationship with the local lord, where they are fed an exorbitant amount of money. He was able to- They weren't a local lord yet. First of all, that's not a feudal relationship. He had to, he had to bomb the shit out of the people who were there. Yes, and then he had to explode the place first. And then- Yeah, he, so uh, basically, 
So basically what he said, no? <laughs> Stabilize the Russian economy, I have humor. pulling the average Russian from degrading poverty to comfortable working class, even creating a sizable international middle class. After this point in the early 2000s, which globally was the best period of growth ever in human history, Russia did incredibly well. This was largely since resource prices were very high due to the developing world, and especially China was growing so rapidly. At this point, Russia appeared to its own inhabitants and outsiders as a sort of Roman principate, a calm, responsible dictatorship that wasn't that far from being a democracy, but was also set up for massive economic and social growth. However, in 2014, global resource prices crashed, and what people saw was that the Russians hadn't invested any of their money from high resource prices into long-standing industries that could operate besides that. And the exact same process occurred in Russia. Uh, he's just going to completely glance over the invasion of Georgia and the invasion yes. of Crimea. Yes. Uh, I think we're, we're, we're just going to skip that part. This is horrible. We're not even in What the... is a success story to one of them? <laughs> what is a success Thank story? You. There is no success story. He's basically you, slowly... You know, you know what's absolutely horrible? Is there is a success story. He has over 500,000 subscribers. No, there's no success story because he still can't find a girlfriend. Therefore... Every video is about the doom of civilization because no one will go out on a date with him. That's true. That's true. Yeah. I guess I, I, I'm content with... Uh... Really see yeah. the Russia that exists today come about in the aftermath of the collapse of global resource prices in 2014. The 2008 financial crisis was a giant turning point for Russia because beforehand, Putin's calculation was that the West would help grow their economy and for them to develop as a society. And Putin had very strong relationships with Western leaders, including... Yeah, but... Why is he citing... <laughs> why are we going back to 2008 if 2014 is the turning point? He's, he's just citing so many... He's citing all these years that legitimately important stuff happened in Russian history, and then it's like, but does oh, it... it's just the economy... Tony Blair in Britain, because the West thought that Russia would become a democracy, and they viewed Putin as the person who would shepherd that process. However, after 2008, the Russians made the calculation that the West wasn't everything it was chalked up to be because they just blew up their own economies. And Russia then went through a process of separating itself from the West. I blew up my own economy. This is... this... this entire slide contradicts everything in the other slides. Stop it. Mr. Hetman, are we boring you? You guys aren't. He is. <laughs> He's pissing me off. All right, I gotta let this dog run around again. And pushing for its foreign policy in exchange for losing potential economically through integrating through the West. And we start to see Russia's wars in Georgia and Crimea. And... The mindset that got Russia into the current Ukraine war in a lot of ways started in the aftermath of 2008 as the Russians realized that they would have to protect mm. their own interests because Pause the West was not second. an all-abiding god that could supply them all the answers. Okay. Another book I got a lot from for this video was Fragile Empire by Ben Judah. One of the points that really struck me is how well, weird the Russians... I have a question for Hetman. I'm not yep. sure if the term is the same in Ukrainian. Hanat Krimsky. Uh, Krimsky uh, Hananet, I think, or something. Okay, like how do you translate wrong. this to English correctly? Yeah, in English, in English, it is um, Crimean Hananet. Okay, would not have known that. <laughs> it's not very intuitive. Crimean Hananet. Yeah. Honey, okay. Which hasn't been oh, extant, which hasn't been extant for 300, 400 years. Right. Russian ruling classes today. Yeah, I just asked because... If you look at the... the, the, the yeah. Inner circle Vladimir Putin surrounds just, himself with, 
or the people he gives important government positions to, to own the oh, old geez. massive Soviet state owned companies. They're just random friends from his hometown. You'll get crazy stories like the guy who just used to sell Putin chemical equipment now builds his palaces. A good friend who he'd grab lunch with and worked as a lawyer, Medvedev, was president while Putin sat down for a few years. Putin's friends and colleagues from earlier in his life are now the new nobility in the what same is... way that when William the Conqueror took over England, the lord of some parish by Dol de Britannia is now the Duke of York. This is... This... Not... He's actually complete. He's, he's correct, but it's not the example he needs to be making. Yeah, I was just going to say... He the Norman funny. Empire is a very... Hey, good for him. He read a book. Yeah. Like, the Norman Empire and their system of nobility was very different from from Russian cronyism because the basic defining thing of the uh, of nobility historically is the fact that the families had long-lasting relationships with each other that they actively reinforced over time, which is very different from just someone that you randomly know. Yeah, but yeah, but also more it the... depends a little bit of the and the country. Yeah, like more in of the, the point... countries yeah. that had a big, big nobility class sort of group, it 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 became more complicated. Like in the like in my favorite country, the Polish nope. Lithuanian Commonwealth, in which yeah, you find that in system... which the nobility was super big and very uh, uh, graded. So how should I say you had the noble that had nothing basically you had the metal nobility and then you have the magnates that were william on top. william the conqueror probably had like probably had like some servant or something that he really that he really liked and uh and ate lunch with at some point but that servant was a commoner and so he could never become like did that servant build Duke or something <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You find that system, though, everywhere in a connection of people who know one another and give each other perks. Uh, like, nobility is relationships. Congratulations, you've, you've noticed the, the trend, but that doesn't make it a medieval society. Uh, because you'll find that in other countries that are not medieval. You'll find that in tribes. Like where the people Where the people who control uh, resources in a tribe are have oh, those kinds of relationships it's a basic those are human proto medieval countries <laughs> it's a basic you'll find human... that in companies too yeah it's a basic way of humans organizing themselves it's not particularly companies are modern medieval countries you just uh, don't know your history and are quite like <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah so like it's not special it's really important to think about and emblematic of the biggest problem that faces russia today that being the complete lack of social trust in high trust societies like the U.S., Denmark, or Japan, people until recently trust trusted their government, bad. neighbors, institutions, or politicians, at least to a degree where they expected them to perform their duty the and not do massive corruption. Does he live in so? the United States? Is that yeah, so? Yeah, he does. He, he lives in a state of denial. <laughs> I think the United which States, state is that? The United States is normally considered a high tr a high trust society, nonetheless. Um, so I think this is actually sociologically right. Um, but it yeah, but the United States, like what a high trust society means. So, so like uh, Hat Hatman's talked about this: the degree to which people, older uh, citizens of Ukraine or Russia, trust the state is very high. Uh like like that high trust like is 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 kind of an erroneous designation i think um because people are very critical of their societies too here that doesn't mean they're not trusting of them so like the the lack of criticality in in some circles would indicate a high level of trust too like i don't think this is nearly as important a factor as people try to pretend it is because by and large, by and large, the organs of a society and its institutions will keep on turning regardless of whether someone trusts it until you stick your shoe in it. Stick your shoe? Uh, I was making a Dutch joke about wooden sabos.
Russia is such a low trust society that Putin only feels safe with those who are completely reliant on him or those who would be nobodies without their personal connections to him and are thus in charge. Even then, he doesn't really trust them to close to the same degree as a Western politician would trust the members of another political party. Politics in um, Russia today mirrors that. Yes, because that's what Democrats and Republicans are well known for. Exactly. They're enduring that trust. And, for their own thinking of, oh, yeah, the Republicans trust. They're, they're enduring trust so and uh, uh, camaraderie. <laughs> There's so much trust there. It's incredible. He put a uh, a note saying, until recently. I assume he's referring to Wagner. Uh, no, I thought he was refer. No, it was re he was talking about the United States with a note. Wait, but the, in the U.S. there was never that trust between Republicans and the Democrats. No. Uh not not, not to hear them say it. I think there wasn't there more trust historically, like in the. Uh, like in the uh, 60s, 70s, 80s, 50s. What about the Civil War? Uh, yeah, yeah, but that was... Well, that's not what, what time he's talking about. It seems there, there wasn't. Yeah, there, there's never been a huge amount of trust for the Americans. Like, the 70s is when all this begins, right? Uh, when, when the massive uh, hyper-conservative re revolution begins in America. So, like, the 60s, not really. The 70s are a reaction to the 60s. So basically, it's from 1945 to 1960 is when trust occurs. And that's about it. Yeah. Uh, America is not a very well-constituted politically society where everyone has been getting along for quite some time. We've had, we've had a very long period of time. Uh, basically, not, there are very few people alive who remember a period of time when America was generally considered trusting of one another like i know americans talk about that a lot that concept of i wish we could all come together again and like it was after 9 11 and have sunflowers and and rainbows you don't even go here that of a medieval european country it's hard to read the politics of the second world or former communist countries in the west Today, partially on a purely cultural basis, people communicate about power in basically the opposite way. I talk about this in my videos on guilt, Why and, is guilt and shame capitalized. Uh, because he's talking about guilt and shame societies, a concept that isn't really supported, but uh, isn't real. He believes in power yeah. in the West is understated, guys. That's why when BLM came out to protest against police brutality, the police were brutal against them because power in the West is understated. I mean, he says that BLM are the rulers of society, so... Oh, uh, yeah. Wait, who says that? I'm sorry. By defaultist. BLM are the rulers of society. Yeah. In the US. Yeah, he... Yeah, that's what he says. Dramatically yeah, well, yeah. overstating your abilities is seen as bringing honor to your nation in shame-based cultures. Is America a shame-based culture because what if all this is dramatically overstated his abilities? Yeah, I think so. Oh, God, Wolf I Warrior. I feel shame for what if all this, so maybe I'm from a shame culture. I don't feel shame. I just feel contempt. I'm not a contemptuous person. ...in Western from non-Western societies. However, also it's not about political parties or mobilization in the public like it is in the West, rather like the Wars of the Roses or Game of Thrones with different nobles having very personal ties, which determine their political what? alliances, which are constantly shifting under the hood. Under you the hood. realize that that's a contradictory statement and that, for example... Personal ties in Game of Thrones didn't necessarily stop anyone from betraying anyone else. <sighs> but indiscreet until the swords finally come out. Be clear that I, and really no one, actually knows what's going on in Russia now. Partially that since this society is not transparent with Western journalists. However, the political divide cuts across the hearts of individuals.
I'm willing to accept that you, what if all this, don't know what's happening in Russia. Until yeah. everything falls apart. If, what if the Pelican other major part of the Russian elite, does. besides Putin's nobility, are the oligarchs. Again, like a medieval country where oftentimes local officials or army commanders would declare themselves nobility when the central government fell apart, the oligarchs tended to be old Communist Party officials who bought out the Soviet state companies during the fall. This was done really corruptly, with the auctions for these companies often being held at 3 a.m. in the middle of the woods, so that only those who were in the know could buy them. Since society was falling apart, they often bought these companies for nothing, only for them to become some of the richest people in the world afterwards. Under the czars, the czar would play a shell game where he'd either work with the nobility to hold down the population or be the protector of the people against the nobility. This is what Putin's done. He keeps the oligarchs around and works with them given they centralize power in a way that's useful for him to control society. He's right to a degree there. Is yeah, he... but that's also a tactic yeah. that's used by rulers all over the world and autocrats all throughout history. Is he not going to... One... Uh... I just one I just have one question about all of this because I think not only we have lost it but most of all he has lost it what does any of this have to do with Russia ending in 5 years Yeah this doesn't have anything to do with that it's just talking about it's just rehashing all these points that, that he has about to, Russia How's that connected to the topic Is he not going to if he actually knew anything about Russia, he'd at least be talking about the distinction between oligarchs and Siloviki, which is more of an actual, uniquely Russian distinction, rather than just uh, people in power. Yeah, more to the point, like he would be also be talking about how, what lines upon Russia would balkanize on, right? So, like, you have ethnic Russians, but then you have the fact that Russia is largely not composed of ethnic Russians. Like, that would make a halfway compelling argument, but he hasn't actually looked at anything about that. Like, he thinks that he thinks that Russia is something that happens in the halls of the Kremlin only. And Yeah, he thinks in the way that it would imply that Russia couldn't collapse. Yeah, and like that Russia is an idea that occurs in Moscow and emanates outward instead of, you know, it being a country. Uh, and and to be fair, that was how a lot of criminologists thought during the Cold War. And obviously they were full of crap, so. The oligarchs support the current order since it leaves them incredibly wealthy and powerful. He also periodically destroys oligarchs and shames them to garner support from the general population. In all the books I've been reading for this video, one theme keeps on coming up again and again. Modern Russia doesn't make any sense. That statement means multiple things on different levels. People uh, I, I imagine that Russia doesn't make any sense to you because you haven't been studying Russia. People in the West like to imagine that they are the endpoint for soulless consumerism, modernism, atheism, postmodernism, or irony. The truth, however, is that these are pushed much, much further in the former communist or second world. In a lot of ways, the West is more traditional than Russia or China, with more leftovers from older cultural forms like politeness, religion, or social structures. If you want to see what modernity looks like pushed to an extreme... What? Yeah, Why does he nothing about Russians? Why does he think that Russians don't believe in politeness? Like uh, they have different standards of politeness, but you can definitely say something well, rude do. to a I Russian. Mean, I sometimes think Polish topic, people don't believe in have, politeness, um, but that's a whole different. Matter. But but they're not. If you visit <laughs> Russia and you go to a freak like a store or a grocery like a grocery store, or any business. That business owner can cuss you out for no reason if you're not, if you're just looking around. And that's I very mean, common. They do that all the time. People I will mean, I, insult I mean, each other on the streets. I mean, I sometimes think that Poland doesn't believe in politeness. I, I don't give those understand. anecdotes. Like, like, I once, I think I was a teen in the mountains. I went to a store with ice cream. I'm like, I would like some ice cream. Which one? Uh, strawberry. 
There is no strawberry. Chocolate. No chocolate. There's only one left. Why did you ask me which one I want? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is there any cheese in this cheese shop at all? You know. An example of this like... is the red pill applies much more strongly in Russia than America. How would you know? You can't get a date in America. How do you know about dating in Russia? Uh, don't be mean to uh, it, Rudolf. He's... What's his name? Rudolf? Rudyard. What? Rudyard. Rudyard? I mean, if you look at uh, Tim Life, uh... <sighs> let's look at Putin's mistress and... Uh... Yeah, but that's oh, not. Oh, she's uh, mistress. She's she's forty, and he's definitely a high status man. So, um, oh, that's and not I think true. that they're a... the real power in Russia is like very that. clearly uh, Perogin, mm -hmm. per, per, uh, Pergosian. He's going to come back any day now. Just like Elvis. Yes, per, Pergosian and Elvis and JFK will come back, and QAnon will rejoice. I see. In? Go to China. One of my favorite themes here comes from the book Nothing is True and Everything is Possible. It's about a guy who worked as a film producer in Russia for over a decade, and he talks about Putin's propaganda machine. The thing is, as a person who does work in media full time, I actually have profound admiration for how Putin structured his propaganda. Russia has mastered postmodern propaganda. The Russian government Amazing. purposely sets up controlled oppositions that are dissenting enough to attract people and keep them agitated without actually doing anything. The Putin government is created around a dozen opposition parties. The Russian media will take a series of completely contradictory positions from different points of view in the same day. This succeeds at basically supplying the public with whatever they want without providing a single coherent thing for them to get angry at and rally around. This is propaganda that's perfect for manipulating young people who don't believe in anything. The media control of Russia is just through the news media. Written media. He, he said that he admires Russia so much, and then he explained how it is that uh, Russian propaganda is just like his videos. Yeah, I know. I can't. I can't. I mean, maybe that's why he admires it. He copies it. Yeah, but not on purpose. It's not like this is a sophisticated operation uh, at its heart. It's It's. It's knee-jerk, like, mwah, mwah. <laughs> Russia doesn't have the ability to respond in a very hyper, like, uh, they don't have a, 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 a media environment like the Republicans do, for example, that is able to work the way it does, that this pushes, like, true po postmodern media uh, excellence is Fox News, right? That's not what exists in Russia. Yeah, and the internet are largely free. The calculation here was that you have to let out steam for the educated classes that tend to launch revolutions, while the normies who actually fight in them can just watch TV. The Russians didn't see the internet as a big deal when it was being formed, which meant it was able to get too big for them to regulate it. The Russian government's lack of control over the internet will probably be its downfall. Russia suffers Europe's PTSD the worst of anyone. It None of that sentence preceding sentences made sense. The internet is going to kill Russia and it suffers Europe's PTSD. What what PTSD does Europe have? Europe is a He's country. For a world War II angle here. Keep Europe is a country. It cannot have PTSD, first of all. Uh, a continent? Uh, yeah, I apologize. Europe is a continent. It can't have PTSD. You also can't put Europe collectively in therapy either Holy. i know i know millennial war tries to claim that society with ptsd a post-genocidal society for example uh russia to a degree shares that commonality because of the trauma of the second world war was a huge demographic trauma on you know the russian ssr uh, um but no he's i don't know if he's gonna going for the right thing here. So well, let's let's, let's see what happens. 
If you look at Europe, you see a society that doesn't really know what it's going to believe in and is dying of ennui. Europe has tried following God, nationalism, leftism, and humanitarianism only to see each fail. I'm sorry. Russia has done this the most. Wait, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What was that list? God, nationalism, left, leftism? What? Can yeah, you, hang on. Can you turn back time? And... Godism? Did you say godism? I think you just said God. Kind of ennui. Europe has tried following God, nationalism, leftism, and humanitarianism only to see each God, fail. nationalism, what? leftism? Humanitarianism. Left-wing politics can be national, nationalistic in nature. Does that person know this? No, he, he thinks no. that uh, ideologies are things that happen one at a time instead of complex interactions of, of different ideas present in a society a at society once. Society with multiple, yeah. You can have multiple ideologies happening, like they. God, God, nationalism, left. And Europe tries it. They've tried it. Okay, God didn't work. Religion didn't work for us. Nationalism, nationalism didn't, didn't work. work. Leftism didn't work. We got to try something new. The only thing left is Anway. The only thing left is Anway. Apparently, I'm glad he got his thesaurus out, but I I don't think you. Yeah. Can, like, uh, the populations of Europe are experiencing Anway. Like, what? They'd be v very perplexed at this. They just had like left huge left labor riots dead. in France. They just had huge labor riots in France. Leftism is dead. Quiet, just like God and it, nationalism. Uh, infinite leftism has become less infinite. Nietzsche killed God. When so did, when did nationalism end? I did not get the memo. I, I don't uh, know. Didn't you have? I think he thinks it ended in 1945. There were Polish elections like yesterday. <laughs> no, like national elections yeah, yesterday. Ah, uh, my goodness. All right, continue this. I want to get through this bastard tonight. We're halfway. Yeah. Russia has done this the most of anyone. Russia is one of the countries that has had the most trauma ever from a combination of serfdom, the Mongols, the communists, or world wars. PTSD, as I can say from personal experience, sadly, breaks up people's senses of time. The world seems chopped up into little discrete pieces that can't be put together. You cannot pathologize an entire country based off of a psychological yeah. definition for an individual. You can't do that. Oh, that's not how the world works. PTSD was not intended to describe the symptoms of a society. Like I remember it used to be a thing where these far right people would try to claim that uh, the, the Western civilization was depressed and that's why everything went into decline after World War I. Yeah, that's not how that works. Like, loss of interest in once enjoyed activities. There's not a collective Russian activity that they all enjoy together. Like, that's not how those things work. Oh, Jesus Christ. That, that's like, that's taking, oh, that's, I don't even know what's the right word for that, that kind of idiocy. Uh, uh, it's, it's like... The right word is escaping me, but like, you can't do that. that that's I would that. say... I personally call it like the Plato's Republic fallacy or something. I don't think that's accurate. Yeah, that's not going to work either. We'll, we'll just call it Rudyardism. Yeah. This is why I call Russia the broken mirror. This is shown in Russian media, and as you'll see, the government. Russia is a series of discordant pieces that don't really know how to fit together. The ruling ideology in Russia now is cynicism, but that just doesn't work for the long term. If you dig in that's not an ideology. You know what the Russian ruling class really believes, the short answer is nothing. They support the regime since they don't have a better choice. It's a society stuck in time, incapable of seeing its place in future or history. Societies like this fall apart and break under pressure. Russia is one of the weakest and most fragile societies in the world on a cultural basis. The Putin regime makes a big what, political uh, statement of standing for the uh, vertical of power. That's... This is an idea that Putin... You can't actually I make can't that... agree with that. 
You can't make that statement because that's I, I not how with that. that's not how culture works. They're not sliders yeah. on a, a, a grand strategy game. <laughs> yeah, I... culture level fifty. <laughs> He he just thinks that uh, like this Russia is actually just... that's actually extremely not true. Like the level of nationalism, rabid nationalism in Russia is extremely strong to the point like, that it actually that, infiltrates yeah, and permeates that. the Jewish community of Every Russia. Every Russian you know? I've ever met fucking loves being Russian. Yes. Like. They, they Jewish just, Russian people see themselves as Russian first and Jewish second. Yes, every yeah, Russian I've ever met really in. In. absolutely fucking Sorry? loves being Russian. has a vertical line of power like an elevator that theoretically stretches from any local police officer, provincial governor, or mayor. Oh. It also goes the other way. I guess way, he mentioned the local complaint, there. It will go up to the good czar kind of. who will hear and redress the issues that are happening on a local basis. The vertical of power is a popular image for the Russian regime, since the reality is the opposite. Russia, like a medieval country, that sentence makes no sense, is incredibly decentralized. Local bosses have large amounts of power that the centralized government can't remove. Russian institutions like the local bureaucracy, army, police, or gangs operate under their own rule with the government only being able to distantly adjust them. But we've run the Soviet experiment of extreme top-down authority, and the Russians have collectively rejected that. And Russia is one of the most likely countries on earth to accept top-down authority. Uh, what, what do you think Putin yeah, he, is? It, He's getting... It, what, I mean... The people in that uh, image are accepting top-down authority. I don't know what he's talking about. Yeah, but, but more to the point, he's not understanding the basic way of how authoritarian regimes work. Like, he, it's like he's picturing, like, Hitler as all-powerful instead of Hitler balancing a coalition the way he has to, just of who he has to balance that coalition of. I'm just so surprised that he does. he's never othered learning about rules for rulers i feel like that's like the i feel like that's something that he definitely would be familiar with uh yeah and like like leadership in any system involves appeasing parties it's the it it, it doesn't there's no point at which uh whether it's authoritarian or democratic or anything in between uh, you have to be able to appease different parties. The The fact that some of the parties that the Russian oligarchs have to appease are frankly criminal doesn't mean they don't have to be appeased and that it's a somehow unique relationship. I guess he he's just really showing the fact that he doesn't understand how human relationships work at all, that he thinks that all this is uniquely Russian. Or, or yeah, having a relationship would help him. Sorry, I, I, I'm not going to get off that. When your first three seconds of the video involves sexual frustration, I'm going to hammer you for it. <laughs> what? Oh, come on. Uh, Don't be mean to uh, our friend. It's not my I wonder friend. if he's going to mention declining male height in the, uh, it, at the end of this video, because also, I've been waiting for that. Also, the height is uh, dependent on several different factors. So. Uh, I, I don't have a problem. I'm six foot. Suck it. Excuse Apparently, me? what a fault is What did you say? There's nothing the centralized government can use to motivate people to follow them with their hearts. Russia today is like a Latin American country in a geography where that doesn't work. In Russia, there is no shared social trust, and people try to nab. Okay, first of all, that sentence made no sense. Second of all, that was basically <sighs> geographic essentialism. I mean, what did you expect? He's also said the same thing about Russia having no social trust, like seven times when that's obviously not the case. Russia is Latin America, except it's not Latin America, Abbey, so it's not Latin trust America. Environment where everyone is at for them. It, it's not Latin America. It's like Latin America in every way except being in Latin America. Except it's Russia. <laughs> How deep? Selves. In Russia, you often have to pay bribes to drive your car around town, pass a test, avoid conscription, get a driving permit, or start your business. This is how Brazil or Mexico work. 
but they keep operating since they're in the tropics where even if you fail, you won't freeze to death over the winter. And also since they don't have any external uh, threats. Okay. He, I, he thinks that the threat of the energy empire, they're not going to freeze to death if any. Is, is he, he is saying he, that Russia does not continue to operate? I think he's yeah. saying that Russia is going to freeze to death next winter. I mean, that's what Russia said about Europe last year. Yeah. And, and uh, that's what he said about Europe last year. Everything yeah, is actually a game of Frostpunk. Yeah, I can only, we can only hope. <laughs> I'm joking. Not really. Oh my goodness. So blue. In cold <laughs> Russia, which is stuck in the center of the map, you need to have a functioning society to a much greater... Oh god. He did it again. How can... How can Russia be in the... How... How... Oh my god. I'm gonna need a minute. How can Russia be in the center of the... The center of a thing is relative, first of all. So Russia cannot be in the center of the map. Also, Russia has been in the center of What If Altists map, and Italy has been in the center of What If Altists map. They cannot both be in the center unless you think that Russia is Italy. I... 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 It's over. I'm done. Stick a fork in me. I've been cooked for one hour in 300 degree oven. I am a potato. Inner degree. The Russians are aware in their souls that once they become incompetent, they get conquered. And that weighs on them heavily because it's happened too many times to count. When I look at modern Russia, I see less a country that is actively trying to drive its people into the dirt so they snap back, and rather a regime which just doesn't have enough stakeholders to keep it operating. Russia is one of the most unequal societies in the world, in range with Latin American countries. This means there are a few who are dazzlingly wealthy, and most are poor and have no stake in the society. Russia hasn't really recovered as a real economy since the fall of the Soviet Union. Soviet industries weren't competitive, which meant that when capitalism and globalization got into Russia, the factories and other such jobs just shut down. Russia instead evolved from being a Belarus is not Russia. European industrialized country Belarus to more like a Saudi Arabia or Brazil, <laughs> completely dependent upon resource exports to the rest of the world. In Russia's case, this was oil, natural gas, various minerals, and food. This is a horrible position to be in, given these countries tend to have wildly fluctuating fortunes based off global markets, which tend to soar and then crash and then again. These countries kind of act like heroin addicts, alternating between blowing money in insane ways in the highs and then collapsing in the bad times. Industrial countries tend to be pretty stably wealthy over time. However, the other side of this is that like Brazil or Saudi Arabia, since the economy is driven by a handful of export industries owned by the very wealthy, it means you're not really sure what the rest of the population does. Russia we, we, we know what the population does because they have jobs. Never mind. Isn't, isn't this literally a chart like, of the Russian economy? Uh, yes. And more to the point, like, how do you think those export economies work people work in the businesses in which export the things yeah that's what what happens it is it's true that export economies have the issue of uh being more vulnerable to market fluctuations but uh sure but that doesn't mean that we don't know what people do for a living yeah but like, any country that has a census People know what you're doing. Yeah, like, oh my God, what is this? It's like, it's like, center of the map is still bothering me. I'm not gonna lie. What, what like, why would you use that for, why would you unironically use that phrase and think you're intelligent? Wait, what's the other? Other is basically anything not covered by a census. Wait, but culture, sports. 
this almost certainly in this case. Information and communication activities are part of cultures. Hotels and public catering businesses are part of culture. Yeah, it, but certainly. I, I don't know what this is a pie graph of. It could just be a pie graph of how much pizza I want because 67% sounds how, about correct. How much pizza do you want? 67% of the pizza, please. I like pizza. That's selfish. Okay, I just I just found it, it I just found statistics on exactly what all the people in Russia are doing. Uh 15% of people are in wholesale retail trade or car and motor repair, which is weird. Uh 14% are in manufacturing, 9.6% are in education, and 8.9% are in transportation. Uh so yeah, we know exactly what people are doing. Yeah, let's continue because we still have 10 minutes. Russia doesn't really have industries that normal people work in. There are a lot of pensioners and people doing odd jobs. That's not a good place to be since it creates a giant underclass of people who don't have anything better to do except rebel. In economics, there's a term for good and bad billionaires where a good billionaire is one who made their own money through their own efforts rather than inheritance and in industries that demand growth for the entire rest of the society. I'm not Those are called unicorns. I'm making this as a statement of the morality of the people involved. But a country like America, 80% of the billionaires made the money through their own efforts and also 80% did it through industries which grew the total economy, such as tech, manufacturing, and things that require innovation, while in Russia... Uh, you are making value judgments there, just so you know. Uh, it's the opposite, where the vast majority operate in industries that basically section off and rent part of the economy through state-controlled companies, mining, and this creates a sense of envy... Of yeah, but if I give, take a product and I make a product to sell in a state-controlled company, and then I pay the workers that were involved in that, I'm still growing the economy. What is this nonsense? He's he's quite he's citing some kind of a book, and I'm trying to find what it is. Uh, I searched for "bad billionaire" and I found like some romance novel. Uh, uh, yeah, is it a MAGA romance novel? I think so. Oh my god. Against the rich in Russia, which isn't comparable in many Western societies. Even it's exactly comparable, irrespective of whether the state owns the business or an individual owns the business. It still is going to grow the economy, and it's not a case of renting it. For the people at the top, they don't trust the regime. The Russian elite has been trying to flee for over a decade. There are more Russian rubles or currency sitting in bank accounts outside Russia, in places like London, Panama, or Cyprus, than there is actual money circulating in the country of Russia. The Russian elite will probably get... No, they're not trying to get isn't out. That, the Russians... Isn't are, that ever... Oligarchs want to sit in Russia, and they want to put their money outside of Russia, because that money will be more stable. Is it, is it almost every single widely traded currency like that, though? Uh, I don't think that's exceptional for Russia. Yo, it's not, but like, like... We are drawing conclusions not based on anything except vibes now. Get delusional, thinking if they remove Putin, they can make Russia pure plutocracy, where the oligarchs run everything, like Ukraine. However, they will fail... Stop. 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 Please stop. Oh, God, stop. To see how Putin restrains the mob from killing them. Let's compare this with China. China is now more in the Stalin school of dictatorship rather than the current Russian model, which is more like a medieval or Latin American dictatorship. Oh China God. is now a Maoist state where the government has massive secret police presence. What? Where the oh government's very God. overweening. This so would be a good few. Uh, what? He thinks that China's Maoist now? Huh? I have to go close my door real quick. Hang on. I am going to keep running this. Suffer with me, friends. Your video, but the Chinese government now <laughs> is actively grinding their people into the ground and basically telling them to suck it up. 
However, at the same time, the Communist Party of China has more legitimacy than Putin's Russia. I don't think any of you can even name what political party Putin's part of. I read a bunch of books on this subject, and I forget it now. The Communist Party of China liberated China from the century of foreign humiliations, ushered in the most rapid economic growth ever in human history, made China a great power with allies on every continent. On top of this, the Chinese Communist Party is a really powerful ruling bloc, with 90 million members that supposedly have a strong shared ideology. The coming crisis in China will be much louder and bloodier than that in Russia, given the pressure from both sides is just much stronger. Wait, what? The combina- what? The coming what? He's coming. claiming that China is going to collapse as, alongside Russia, even though he hasn't explained why There's Russia is going to collapse. States, Everything Wait, is. No, yeah. no, he said there's going to be a brand new revolution in China that's going to be more bloody than the Russian one. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um. That makes no I, sense. I think that he really should uh, Read actually book? say what his videos More are book? about. And also... Uh, that would require him to know Putin's... what his videos are about. Also, Putin's in United Russia, and I think pretty much anybody who studies Russian politics with any level of seriousness is going to know that. Yeah, here's the thing. You cannot simultaneously have an in-depth understanding of Chinese politics, American politics, and Russian politics. It simply cannot be done. Um, also, I would point out that What If Altist has demonstrated an understanding of none of these things. <sighs> or Latin American politics of any description, or, you know... The fact that he essentializes it for Latin American geography, or the fact that he thinks that both Russia and Italy are simultaneously at the center of a fucking map. I think he thinks Turkey's also in the center of the map. Turkey is probably the only place on the planet Earth where I can conceivably say is in the center of a map. And that's being half Turkey the is in the middle of my plate. Got him. But I'm Damn. Tish. <laughs> <laughs> of the stronger regime putting more pressure onto the population. Russia's collapse is going to be much more confusing. No one can really explain what happened in the Second Congo or Fall of Rome. There was just a point when the center lost legitimacy and everything unraveled. Russia is such a low pressure I environment that I see the vertical. Second Congo Sorry? The Second Congo. Yeah, no, he can't explain it because he's never actually studied the second congo war that's what i i mean just that's a very very entangled mess of a conflict africa is a dark continent guys remember you can't understand anything that's happening there and you can't understand the congolese civil war because you can study it but it takes specialization you'd know that if you hadn't dropped out of college in one semester rudyard like uh, uh. <laughs> no one can know what happened. It was a mystery. Article of power collapsing in the next few years as Russia falls into feudal states and warlords. A major problem for this video is that the sources on what's going on in Russia are absent in the West. I'm. That's not a ma- That's not the major problem with this video basically guessing for the post-Ukraine war period. However, the underlying variables make me confident that Russia's... You're basically guessing about what will happen in a a period of time that hasn't existed yet. (laughs) Thank you for letting us know that future... uh, Never mind, I I give up. Games for future past. It's going to fall apart. One of the biggest factors is demographics. Russia is one of the worst demographics of any country on the planet. Russia has the same life expectancy as Papua New Guinea. This is one tip-off for me that the society is broken. The reason Russia has such a low life expectancy is not... What the hell is a broken society? ...or third world countries. It since middle-aged men are drinking themselves to death from hopelessness. Russia is one of the worst aging problems in the world and one of the lowest birth rates. 
Russia is a society where its inhabitants are trying to leave it as soon as possible through dying and are unwilling to bring more. See, this is actually really interesting stuff for these countries, but he doesn't understand it. Like population wow. triangles, like, yeah, like look at Russia and look at China. Those are countries that are in serious trouble. Uh, the United States is fine, though. Germany. Yeah, I like find he, it interesting how the population triangle kind of goes the kind of goes the other way with uh, Russia and China. Uh, yeah, those are countries that will have severe demographic problems, not because they're sitting around drinking themselves to death, but like this is like really important stuff to understand if you want to get into uh, prognostication of geopolitics. But he doesn't understand those things. Uh, It's just a broken society. Yeah, and, and more to the point, like... Uh, oh, jeez, it's just so embarrassing for him. ...for people into it. Analysts like Peter Zihan or George Friedman have been saying for years that Russia would collapse in the early 2020s due to these demographic trends finally getting to headway. The thing people fail to understand with aging is that it holistically affects the entire society. Let no one fails to understand that. It's a well-established historical process. Who's Peter Zihan? Is he's, he like some... Peter Zihan is a market guru more than anything else. Uh, he's basically no selling you things. I, I wouldn't, he's not necessarily wrong, but he, he wants you to buy shit. Which is something to always be important to remember. So basically what he does is he gets a bunch of people in a room and he starts talking in grand demographic terms in order to get them to invest in things. It's, it's, uh, I wouldn't necessarily call him a, a penetrating defense analyst or, uh, upcoming global political scientist. <sighs> Less young people means less people working to support the elderly. Less people having children, which makes the problem compound. On top of this, an older population will make conservative policies that won't be able to adapt to change. An aging population is social death by a thousand cuts. If you look at Russia, you find that their demographics are very similar to China. They have a giant generation in their early 40s who can't have children. For women, this is the... Why, why can't they have children? I think because of a skewed sex ratio, which is weird for an incel to say because they believe that, uh, because they believe that all women are like polygamous or whatever. Uh, hypergamous. I think that's what it, uh, hypergamous, yes. <laughs> what does hypergamy mean? Hypergamy is uh, the uh, made up concept that a woman will only date up. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. And also that, uh, and it also normally has the idea that uh, there that all societies will be polygamous in in practice because of the fact that women will only date up. Yes. So what happens is that a woman will only date someone at a higher social station than her, and therefore uh, only high value quote unquote men can get access to women. Uh, which, A, oh, commodifies sex in a weird way, and B, is obviously not true, Hetman. You and I know that because we are not high-value men and we've gotten dates, so therefore hypergamy <laughs> is bullshit. Maybe you. I don't know about me. I'm just joking. If you ever go... If you ever go outside, then you'll see, like, homeless couples and stuff like that, so... Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't no. go outside, yeah. uh, obviously. I will only date high-value people. Uh, fair I mean, enough. I mean, like, I've proven the theory. But look, it, 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 uh, they're, 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 basically, if I, I didn't date women that were better than me, I wouldn't date. So that's that. What is your value? Give me your value score. And Six. <laughs> the end point yeah. where you can no longer cope about not being able to have kids. People are animals who are designed to breed first and be rational later. So over history, as you've removed reproductive what? ability... Th That's not how that works. <laughs> the society just falls apart.
Also, there's this large bracket of men in their early 40s. When you're getting to that age, you stop being able to physically take the hardships of youth. In yeah, you're what? absolutely right. Uh, you're absolutely right. To, uh, I I'm not even going to try to pronounce it. There's an entire genre of romance. It's called Uptown Girl. What the? Man in his 20s can work 12-hour shifts six days a week, survive off eating ramen working oh odd jobs and still yeah but his life will be empty and then he'll drink himself to death let's hope that yeah, things yeah and you will ruin Man your in his house 40s who spent his life doing that be... without any hope of something better will start to radicalize and freak out since he knows he has no ability to retire the big problem in russia is a country with old demographics without anywhere near enough wealth to support a welfare state like japan or germany who themselves can't support that Ironically, the Russian data scientist so can Peter Church has they developed not? metrics that can actually We don't know anymore. Oh my god. Unlike Japan, who can afford it, even though they actually can. The top actually three can. metrics are inequality, wage stagnation, and too many elite aspirants. Or more people trying to get to high social status than the society is capable of maintaining. All yes, of these metrics so are completely buzzing off them. for Russia right now. On top of this, there are secondary metrics such as average age of marriage, height, birth rate, university education, and more, all of which are also going off for Russia right now. Russia is statistically primed for a revolution or other kind of political crisis. The demographic I always look for- Congratulations, that's very specific. Russia is oh, primed is so for something to or happen. Or some revolution or some other thing. That's- I'm happy that at the very least he actually uh, amazing. he actually mentioned uh, the height in Russia because I thought he was just gonna forget about it. Although, oh my goodness, didn't really mention it too much though. He didn't give any sort of like it's not like were you expecting something concrete and wait, but what is this supposed to be caused by malnourishment? Uh, that's that that's what I was just gonna say too. That. <laughs> That's Gremlinism. Actually, actually, like, uh, nutrition in Russia, and granted, I'm not an expert at this, but it's been better now than on any time in its history. Like, come on. <laughs> is it uh, because the society is broken and people are sad so they grow shorter? I'm posting diagrams of... Uh, happens, actually, when, oh, that one didn't have Russia in it. Um... Maybe people, maybe Russian people are just. Tan. Look, being shorter helps you fit yeah. on this plane better. But it looks like Russian Russian height okay, is Okay, I have to say that so at least don't... in the past, yeah, Russian yeah, airlines yeah, were, yeah, if anything, uh, be and be infamous for being very scary to fly. Yeah, well, that's because Lufthansa used to be a thing where you got on a plane, and the plane was on a catapult, and they just flung you at Sweden. For, for revolutions is young men. Young men launch revolutions when they feel hopeless, sexually frustrated, and left out of the system. I see young men in Russia having the same problems today that they have in the rest of the world. These include lack of good jobs and the dating crisis, which I stand by as being the number one driver of revolutions around the world. No, okay, no one is going to start a revolution with you, Rudyard, if you can't get a date. I'm sorry. Dating crisis is the number one reason for revolutions around the world. Dating crisis. He's the also. Whole... What the? Does someone? I don't get what he's talking about with the forty-year-olds, and then he's talking about gonna... guys in their forties, and then guys in their twenties, and like, and not apparently no one is having a relationship at okay. all. I'm uh, changing my status again on Discord. I, I, I think Rudyard thinks that everyone is going to join him in revolting because he can't oh have, my God. have sex. Like, like that's the only possible explanation for this. Dating crisis. <laughs> no, like, dude, I'm like, dude, how much money did you make on that bad God. ad at the beginning? You, you can buy the five hundred dollar <laughs> Tinder package. <laughs> There you go. If you see me on Discord now, I will have dating crisis, no one revolution cause. There you go. Oh my god. Oh like, my goodness. Why does he come down to this every single video? Like, like, oh my god, it's like Freud is banging his head against his casket. I will stand by this. If only I had a date, there would be no need for the revolution. 
Hello, darkness, my old friend. <laughs> People should I call him what is bullshit today. In fact, I guess the dating crisis is worse in Russia than the West due to higher oh inequality and feminism being weaker. So that's thus why Russia will more collapse. Polygamy and uh, dating crisis. No fucking yep. that's a huge like no no in Russia. I mean, it's like so underground <laughs> like alternative sexual movements like that. Polygamy. Uh, what the fuck? He also oh, so he God. also uh, in he also male advantage. In male yeah. advantage. But, Earlier in the video, he also explained pretty clearly that women had a disadvantage in dating in Russia because men didn't want to date women who were over the age of 22. So I have no clue what he's going on about now. But yeah. female advantage, don't you see the pink thing? But feminism is weaker, but females have advantage. Male attractiveness yeah, levels, yeah, females don't you will see like the blue field versus being smaller. The, like I, I don't understand. Like, you is attractiveness a percentage now? Oh I, my god! Stop, stop making it into a discussion. Just read the data on the screen. <laughs> read the data. The data is contextlessness. We are exactly, now exactly, which are, means that it's, which means that it's uh, fair because it's not biased by your context it's not biased yes. by like uh, uh, tiny details like reality exactly glad we finally have a consensus in the matter hypergamy among mm -hmm. elite men one of the things I find ironic that no one else has thought of is that for starting the Ukraine war or if China or America have a war over Taiwan all of these countries are basically signing their own suicide notes what the Ukraine war has done is it's given Russian men of military fighting age, who are the target demographic for revolutions, military training, weapons, command structures, and a sense of shared struggle to unify. I, I don't know if you've noticed, but the Russian military is short on weapons, command structures, and military training. Like, extensively. Uh... Like, it has not given them those things. Uh... More to the point, you've got to stop assuming that every I mean, time you train a young agree. man how to fight, he's going to turn against your country. I, I, I don't agree with you. Don't uh, they receive like two weeks of training or something? Uh, yes, excellent. Yeah, also, Russia, is, also, Russia had its had its marriage rate like explode in, during the war, so uh, I don't so know what you he's know. on about. You said they don't have training. They have two weeks training. You yes, lied but they don't have weapons. Air. You lied to us on four, in 4K. I did. Is it 4K? No, it's not, because we're doing a stream on my show. Um, okay. It's at best 1080 sometimes. But yeah, Russian, <laughs> Russians, yeah, that's, that's not happening. Like, that, that would imply that, like, we did that already with the global war on terror. Just go home, my dear, you're drunk. Ah, the, the only real card the, the Russian government can pull at this point to motivate its population is Russian nationalism. The problem with that is that the Ukrainians are too ethnically close. As I've said in this video, the Russian-Ukraine war uh... would be like if the Union was invading the Confederacy today. Don't you dare do that again. That's not what? how that works. Like, I why is Ukraine... What? The existence of Ukraine somehow destroys Russian nationalism, which is going to be news to the Russians. No, that's, 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 ex excuse me, Russia attacking, Ukraine is like the Union attacking the, Conf what? It's not anything like that. What the? That's not even, oh my God. Oh my God. Keep going. Yeah. Just oh. no, nothing left for us to do but press forward. The North would see the South as an immutable part of their country, while the South would see itself as an independent nation that went back centuries. Both have legitimate arguments behind them. I support Ukraine since I... I mean, no! I, you I, idiot! No! The South, the... the South does not go back centuries as an independent nation. Even at the most generous interpretation of the Confederacy being a independent nation going back any oh distance of time. God. It would have been the Confederacy going back five minutes in 1861. What on earth is you smoking, you stupid fuck? Uh, 
support weakening America's rivals. Pulling on American nationalism wouldn't work for that kind of war, since they were fighting the ethnically identical. Except that American nationalism was extensively yeah. the battle Ex cry of freedom. What? Ex yeah. Ex Ex nationalism Ex was prominent on both sides, so I don't know what he's talking what about. The fuck? Except that Ukrainians are not ethnically identical to Russians. They're not. That's also I, I've true. mentioned this before during this stream that even during the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth, Lithuania considered itself a separate Rus from Russia, a completely separate thing. Like a whole new American nationalism is born out of the Civil War. Appeals to American national. Oh my God! It's like, it's like, no. Southerners. However, if you're a young guy in Russia today, you just don't remember the 90s. So Putin's big right to rule doesn't phase you. This is a trend we started seeing in 2011 with the Moscow protests where the younger generation just didn't care that Putin was the hero of the 90s, which must be even more pronounced over a decade later. On top of this, as a young Russian man, you'd basically be looking forward to decades of being de facto slaves to the older generation in exchange for what exactly? On top of this, you're going to be used as cannon fodder in a useless war against your cousins. I think the Russian military will mutiny in the next few years, and this will be the spur for the collapse of Putin's Russia. We've already seen this partly with the failed Wagner coup. I was watching this video by Real Life Lore, where he makes the opposite case that modern Russia is not on the verge of collapse. I really respect his argument for the opposite position, and I recommend you watch it after to hear the other side. However, he makes the valid point, which I wasn't able to believe at the time. Russia was able to successfully redirect its economy away from the West due to the sanctions relating to the Ukraine war to Asia. And it's meant Russia hasn't faced that bad economic losses from the Ukraine war. Russia has in effect become a- First of all, Russia is going to start feeling those economic losses in short order because they've been trying to prop their economy up by basically uh, really bad me methods for the past two years so like that's not something that will last forever um yeah the, the real life lore video wasn't even saying that russia is not going to collapse it was just saying that why is it that the same why is it that russia hasn't yet been hasn't yet collapsed is basically what it was it isn't even isn't even the remotely the same topic as this yeah. video A mega North That's being generous in assuming this video has a topic. North Korea, yeah, or a rogue actor generous. against the American international order. However, since Russia is so dependent on foreign exports, it puts it in a really dangerous position. This is added to in that Russia's export routes are pretty unstable. As I've said many times before on this show, I make no pretensions to being correct in my predictions of the future, and I'm basically betting against God. Part of the reason the global famine I talked to Which is good because you've been wrong so very <laughs> often. That hasn't occurred. Is that the Russians and Ukrainians were able to No, God pretty much thinks you're a tool too. Keep the Black Sea ports operating, allowing Africa and the Middle East to get the Russian and Ukrainian <laughs> grain they're dependent upon for survival. We've actually talked about how that actually worked. But okay. This is a politically tense deal that could fall through at any time. On top of that, besides the Black Sea, which can be very easily blocked by Turkey, the U.S., or Ukraine... No, it can't be very easily blocked by the U.S. or Tur or Ukraine. Only Turkey. They have a treaty specifically designed to allow that to happen. The Trans-Siberian Railroad, a weak connection to the Orient... Oh my god, he used the term Orient. <laughs> Orient. <laughs> That's not a straight, that's... The Rodina? Russia's other ports, such as St. Petersburg, Vladivostok, and Archangel... Is, is he, is he uh, saying that there's a belt of mines running across... Never mind. Yeah, that's All what he's saying. Over ...during the winter, meaning there is a real potential to just completely shut off Russian trade for months straight. This is also, since it's incredibly difficult for the Russians to ship 
their goods through Asia by land. On top of this, the global market is just really tense right now. Russia now is completely dependent upon China, a country which in a couple other videos I've repeatedly said will collapse in a revolution over the next few years. During international secular cycles like ours, the normal thing is for massive price fluctuations. We've already been seeing this since COVID, and as the world gets crazier, so will this. The only thing Russia needs for complete social collapse is a drop in prices for its exports. Russia is in a weak position, and so if the economic glue that holds them together crashes, on, like resource done. prices Keep normally going. do, but especially so in hard times, once the government can't pay its soldiers in the field, they mutiny. This has occurred before in Russia around World War One. At this point... Okay, that's not what happened in World War One. Also, Russian Wait, soldiers... Wait, what did he say that happened during World War One? That uh, Russia the... soldiers mutinied because they weren't being paid. Yeah, that's not what happened at all. Um, I think that's probably happened historically, but not in World War One And not in Russia. Uh, it's a bit more complicated than that, for sure. So his scenario is that China is going to collapse, and because China collapses, it means that uh, Russia is not going to be able to pay its soldiers, so its soldiers are going to rebel. Is this even Russia not existing, or is this just a revolution in Russia? I don't know. Uh, At this point, we're so far into it, and I am so thoroughly stupefied by this. Uh, this was painful. We're almost done. Let's finish. It's not over yet. Russia collapses into warlords. I'm going to make a future video about this at some point, but Russia is still Please, God, don't. a culturally unified country today. However, the project that modern Russia has been pushing since the Mongols of unifying around an oppressive centralized government to fight outsiders more effectively has broken since the Mongols? The pro since the Mongols? The project that modern Russia has been pushing since the since Mongols? Since the Mongols? <laughs> Yeah, that's uh... the Mongolian Empire. Okay, I'm done.